Thank you for joining for another episode of Rob Anderson Overnight. The first part of a reading of the Wikipedia article on the African theologian, Augustine of Hippo, a look at his life and background. We wish to thank the fine folks at Wikipedia for producing such quality content. Please support Wikipedia and their noble program. And now, our reading. Augustine of Hippo Augustine was an early Christian theologian and philosopher, from Numidia, whose writings influenced the development of Western Christianity and Western philosophy. He was the Bishop of Hippo Regius, in North Africa, and is viewed as one of the most important Church Fathers in Western Christianity, for his writings in the Patristic Era. Among his most important works, are the City of God, on Christian Doctrine and Confessions. According to his contemporary Jerome, Augustine established anew the ancient faith. In his youth, he was drawn to Manichaeism, later to Neoplatonism. After his baptism and conversion to Christianity in 386, Augustine developed his own approach to philosophy and theology, accommodating a variety of methods and perspectives, believing that the grace of Christ was indispensable to human freedom. He helped formulate the doctrine of original sin, and made seminal contributions to the development of just war theory. When the Western Roman Empire began to disintegrate, Augustine imagined the church as a spiritual city of God, distinct from the material earthly city. His thoughts profoundly influenced the medieval worldview, the segment of the church that adhered to the concept of the Trinity, as defined by the Council of Nicaea and the Council of Constantinople closely identified with Augustine's work on the Trinity. Augustine is recognized as a son in the Catholic Church, the Eastern Christian Church, and the Anglican Communion and as a preeminent doctor of the Church. He is also the patron of the Augustinians. His memorial is celebrated on the 28th of August, the day of his death. Augustine is the patron son of brewers, printers, theologians, the alleviation of sore eyes, and a number of cities and dioceses. Many Protestants, especially Calvinists and Lutherans, consider him to be one of the theological fathers of the Protestant Reformation. Due to his teachings on salvation and divine grace, Lutherans, and Martin Luther in particular, have held Augustine in preeminence, after the Bible and Saint Paul. Luther himself was, from 1505 to 1521, a member of the Order of the Augustinian Eremites. In the East, his teachings are more disputed, and were notably attacked by John Romanites. But other theologians and figures of the Eastern Orthodox Church have shown significant appropriation of his writings, chiefly Georges Florovsky. The most controversial doctrine associated with him, the Philoke, was rejected by the Orthodox Church. Other disputed teachings include his views on original sin, the doctrine of grace, and predestination. Nevertheless, though considered to be mistaken on some points, he is still considered a son, and has even had influence on some Eastern Church Fathers most notably St. Gregory Palamas. In the Orthodox Church, his feast day is celebrated on June 15. Historian Dermot McCulloch has written, Augustine's impact on Western Christian thought can hardly be overstated. Only his beloved example Paul of Tarsus has been more influential, and Westerners have generally seen Paul through Augustine's eyes. Childhood and Education 
Augustine was born in the year 354 AD in the municipium of Dagestay, now Sao Geras, Algeria, in the Roman province of Numidia. His mother, Monica, was a devout Christian. His father, Patricius, was a pagan who converted to Christianity on his deathbed. Augustine considered the mother a central figure, and considered the father like a stranger. Scholars generally agree that Augustine and his family were Berbers, an ethnic group indigenous to North Africa, but that they were heavily Romanized, speaking only Latin at home, as a matter of pride and dignity. In his writings, Augustine leaves some information as to the consciousness of his African heritage. For example, he refers to Apuleius as the most notorious of us Africans, to Apontitianus as a countryman of ours, Insofar as being African, and to Faustus of Milev as an African gentleman. Augustine's family name, Aurelius, suggests that his father's ancestors were freedmen, of the gens Aurelia, given full Roman citizenship, by the Edict of Caracalla in 212. Augustine's family had been Roman, from a legal standpoint, for at least a century when he was born. It is assumed that his mother, Monica, was of Berber origin, on the basis of her name, but as his family were Hineshchias, an upper class of citizens known as honorable men, Augustine's first language is likely to have been Latin. At the age of 11, Augustine was sent to school at Medoras, a small Numidian city about 19 miles south of Dagaste. There he became familiar with Latin literature, as well as pagan beliefs and practices. His first insight into the nature of sin occurred when he and a number of friends stole fruit they did not want from a neighborhood garden. He tells this story in his autobiography, The Confessions. He remembers that he did not steal the fruit because he was hungry, but because it was not permitted. His very nature, he says, was flawed. It was foul, and I loved it. I loved my own error, not that for which I erred, but the error itself. From this incident he concluded the human person is naturally inclined to sin, and in need of the grace of Christ. At the age of 17, through the generosity of his fellow citizen Romanianus, Augustine went to Carthage, to continue his education in rhetoric. It was while he was a student in Carthage, that he read Cicero's dialogue Hortensius, which he described as leaving a lasting impression, and sparking his interest in philosophy. Although raised as a Christian, Augustine left the church to follow the Manichaean religion, much to his mother's despair. As a youth Augustine lived a hedonistic lifestyle for a time, associating with young men, who boasted of their sexual exploits, the need to gain their acceptance forced inexperienced boys like Augustine to seek or make up stories about sexual experiences. It was during this period that he uttered his famous prayer, Grant me chastity and continence, but not yet. At about the age of 17, Augustine began an affair with a young woman in Carthage, though his mother wanted him to marry a person of his class. The woman remained his lover for over 15 years and gave birth to his son Adiabatus, who was viewed as extremely intelligent by his contemporaries. In 385, Augustine ended his relationship with his lover. In order to prepare himself to marry a 10-year-old heiress, he had to wait for two years because the legal age of marriage for women was 12. By the time he was able to marry her, however, he instead decided to become a celibate priest. Augustine was from the beginning a brilliant student, with an eager intellectual curiosity, but he never mastered Greek. He tells us that his first Greek teacher was a brutal man, who constantly beat his students, and Augustine rebelled, and refused to study. By the time he realized that he needed to know Greek, it was too late and although he acquired a smattering of the language, he was never eloquent with it. However, his mastery of Latin was another matter. He became an expert, both in the eloquent use of the language, 
and in the use of clever arguments to make his points. Moved to Carthage, Rome, Milan. Augustine taught grammar at Targiste during the years 373 and 4. The following year, he moved to Carthage to conduct a school of rhetoric and would remain there for the next nine years. Disturbed by unruly students in Carthage, he moved to establish a school in Rome, where he believed the best and brightest rhetoricians practiced. In 383, however, Augustine was disappointed with the apathetic reception. It was the custom for students to pay their fees to the professor on the last day of the term, and many students attended faithfully all term and then, did not pay. Manichaean friends introduced him to the prefect of the city of Rome, Symmachus, who while traveling through Carthage, had been asked by the imperial court at Milan, to provide a rhetoric professor. Augustine won the job, and headed north to take his position in Milan. In late 384, 30 years old, he had won the most visible academic position in the Latin world, at a time when such posts gave ready access to political careers. Although Augustine showed some fervor for Manichaeism, he was never an initiate or elect, but an auditor, the lowest level in the sect's hierarchy. While still at Carthage, a disappointing meeting with the Manichaean bishop, Faustus of Milieve, a key exponent of Manichaean theology, started Augustine's skepticism of Manichaeanism. In Rome, he reportedly turned away from it, embracing the skepticism of the new academy movement. Because of his education, Augustine had great rhetorical prowess, and was very knowledgeable of the philosophies behind many faiths. At Milan, his mother's religiosity, Augustine's own studies in Neoplatonism, and his friend Simplicianus, all urged him towards Christianity. Initially, Augustine was not strongly influenced by Christianity and its ideologies, but after coming in contact with Ambrose of Milan, Augustine re-evaluated himself, and was forever changed. Like Augustine, Ambrose was a master of rhetoric, but older and more experienced. Augustine was very much influenced by Ambrose, even more than by his own mother, and others he admired. Augustine arrived in Milan, and was immediately taken under the wing by Ambrose. Within his confessions, Augustine states, that man of God received me as a father would, and welcomed my coming as a good bishop should. Soon, the relationship grew, as Augustine wrote, and I began to love him, of course, not at the first as a teacher of the truth, for I had entirely despaired of finding it in thy church, but as a friendly man, Augustine visited Ambrose, in order to see if Ambrose was one of the greatest speakers, and rhetoricians, in the world. More interested in his speaking skills than the topic of speech, Augustine quickly discovered that Ambrose was a spectacular orator. Eventually, Augustine says that he was spiritually led into the faith of Christianity. Augustine's mother had followed him to Milan, and arranged a marriage for him. Although Augustine accepted this marriage, for which he had to abandon his concubine, he was deeply hurt by the loss of his lover. He wrote, My mistress being torn from my side as an impediment to my marriage, my heart, which clave to her, was racked, and wounded, and bleeding. Augustine confessed that he was not a lover of wedlock, so much as a slave of lust, so he procured another concubine, since he had to wait two years until his fiancé came of age. However, his emotional wound was not healed, and even began to fester. There is evidence that Augustine may have considered this former relationship to be equivalent to marriage. In his confessions, he admitted that the experience eventually produced a decreased sensitivity to pain. Augustine eventually broke off his engagement to his 11-year-old fiancé, but never renewed his relationship with either of his concubines. Alypius of Targaste steered Augustine away from marriage, 
saying that they could not live a life together in the love of wisdom if he married. Augustine looked back years later on the life at Kassashirkum, a villa outside of Milan, where he gathered with his followers, and described it as Christian Evitiotium, the leisure of Christian life. Christian Conversion and Priesthood In late August of 386, at the age of 31, after having heard and been inspired and moved, by the story of Pontitianus's and his friend's first reading of the life of Saint Anthony of the Desert, Augustine converted to Christianity, as Augustine later told it, his conversion was prompted by a childlike voice he heard telling him to take up and read, which he took as a divine command to open the Bible, and read the first thing he saw, Augustine read from Paul's epistle to the Romans, the transformation of believers section consisting of chapters 12 to 15 where Paul outlines how the gospel transforms believers, and the believers resulting behavior. The specific part to which Augustine opened his Bible, was Romans chapter 13, verses 13 and 14, to wit. Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. He later wrote an account of his conversion, his very transformation, as Paul described, in his Confessions, which has since become a classic of Christian theology, and a key text in the history of autobiography. This work is an outpouring of thanksgiving and penitence, although it is written as an account of his life. The Confessions also talks about the nature of time, causality, free will, and other important philosophical topics. The following quote is taken from that work. Late have I loved thee, O Lord, and behold, thou wast within and I without, and there I sought thee, thou was with me when I was not with thee, thou didst call, and cry, and burst my deafness, thou didst gleam, and glow, and dispel my blindness. Thou didst touch me, and I burn for thy peace, for thyself thou hast made us, and restless our hearts until in thee they find their ease. Late have I loved thee, thou beauty ever old and ever new. Ambrose baptized Augustine, along with his son Adiodotus, in Milan on Easter Vigil, April in the year 387, a year later, in 388. Augustine completed his apology on the holiness of the Catholic Church. That year, also, Adiodorus and Augustine returned home to Africa. Augustine's mother Monica died at Ostia, Italy, as they prepared to embark for Africa. Upon their arrival, they began a life of aristocratic leisure, at Augustine's family's property. Soon after, Adiodorus, too, died. Augustine then sold his patrimony and gave the money to the poor. The only thing he kept was the family house, which he converted into a monastic foundation, for himself, and a group of friends. In 391, Augustine was ordained a priest in Hippo Regius, in Algeria. He became a famous preacher. More than 350 preserved sermons of his are believed to be authentic, and was noted for combating the Manichaean religion to which he had formerly adhered. In 395, he was made coadjutor bishop of Hippo, and became full bishop shortly thereafter, hence the name Augustine of Hippo, and he gave his property to the Church of Tagaste. He remained in that position until his death in 430. He wrote his autobiographical confessions in 397, his work The City of God was written to console his fellow Christians shortly after the Visigoths had sacked Rome, in 410. Augustine worked tirelessly, in trying to convince the people of Hippo to convert to Christianity. Though he had left his monastery, he continued to lead a monastic life in the Episcopal residence. He left a regular for his monastery that led to his designation as the patron saint of regular clergy. Much of Augustine's later life was recorded by his friend Pisidius, Bishop of Calama, present-day Gelma, Algeria. In his Sancti Augustini Vita, Pisidius admired Augustine, as a man of powerful intellect, and a stirring orator, 
who took every opportunity to defend Christianity against its detractors. Pisidius also described Augustine's personal traits in detail, drawing a portrait of the man who ate sparingly, worked tirelessly, despised gossip, shunned the temptations of the flesh, and exercised prudence in the financial stewardship of his see. Death and Veneration Shortly before Augustine's death, the Vandals, a Germanic tribe that had converted to Arianism, invaded Rome in Africa. The Vandals besieged Hippo in the spring of 430, when Augustine entered his final illness. According to Pisidius, one of the few miracles attributed to Augustine, the healing of an ill man, took place during the siege. According to Pisidius, Augustine spent his final days in prayer and repentance, requesting that the penitential Psalms of David be hung on his walls, so that he could read them. He directed that the library of the church in Hippo, and all the books therein, should be carefully preserved. He died in August 430. Shortly after his death, the Vandals lifted the siege of Hippo, but they returned not long thereafter, and burned the city. They destroyed all of it, but Augustine's cathedral and library, which they left untouched. Augustine was canonized by popular acclaim, and later recognized as a doctor of the church in 1298, by Pope Boniface VIII. His feast day is 28 of August, the day on which he died. He is considered the patron saint of brewers, printers, theologians, Sarais, and a number of cities and dioceses. The city of St. Augustine, Florida, is named after him. Relics According to Bede's True Martyrology, Augustine's body was later translated or moved to Cagliari, Sardinia, by the Catholic bishops expelled from North Africa by a generic. Around 720, his remains were transported again by Peter, Bishop of Pavia, an uncle of the Lombard King Ligatrand, to the Church of San Pietro in Ciel di Oro in Pavia, in order to save them from frequent coastal raids by Muslims. In January 13, 27, Pope John XXII issued the papal bull, Veneranda Santorin Patrum, in which he appointed the Augustinians guardians of the tomb of Augustine, called Arca, which was remade in 1362, and elaborately carved with bass, reliefs, of scenes from Augustine's life. In October in the year 1695, some workmen in the church of San Pietro in Ciel di Oro in Pavia discovered a marble box containing some human bones, including part of a skull. A dispute arose between the Augustinian hermits, Order of St. Augustine, and the regular canons, canons regular of St. Augustine, as to whether these were the bones of Augustine. The hermits did not believe so, the canons affirmed that they were. Eventually, Pope Benedict XIII directed the Bishop of Pavia, Monsignor Pertusidi, to make a determination. The bishop declared that, in his opinion, the bones were those of St. Augustine. The Augustinians were expelled from Pavia in 1700, taking refuge in Milan with the relics of Augustine and the disassembled Arca, which were removed to the cathedral there. San Pietro fell into disrepair, but was finally rebuilt in the 1870s, under the urging of Agostino Gaetano Riboldi, and reconsecrated in 1896, when the relics of Augustine and the shrine were once again reinstalled. Thank you for listening to our episode, Rob Anderson Overnight. This episode featured a reading about the theologian Augustine, from the folks at Wikipedia. We'd like to know what you think. Please share your thoughts and responses, and join us for a future episode.